So hello everyone. This is a little bit of an investigation into the Ozobot Bit 2.0 and the Ozobot Evo. Um, the Bit and the Evo are a slightly different pair of um, can you pass an Evo? A pair of little robots that are great for learning um, about basic programming concepts. Great tool for kindergartners all the way up to, hey, my age, because it's lots of fun. You can program in color codes. It's immediately engaging. And you can program in Blockly and eventually, I think, in JavaScript. So this is the Evo. It's a basic comparison. The Evo is bigger. But aside from that, it has um, a fair feature set greater than the Ozobot bit. But today we're focusing on the bit. So the bit has these two, four, five sensors at the bottom and they are, there's a basic behavior of the bit that will cause it to read these um, color code sequences and interpret them. Okay, so um, there are a couple of things that I want to work through, and um, some of them is basic information like getting it started, calibrating it, uh, but there are a few other things that are behaviorally, behaviorally uh, significant because there, I think anyone out there may have um, experienced a few um, deviations in how the Ozobot performs exactly whether I'm going to be able to um, reproduce those or not um, we'll, we'll find out as we go. But my first basic task will be this to um, take the lists, the various lists of Ozobot codes and to take each code and to demonstrate it um, as an individual sort of feature or programmable item for this uh, particular Ozobot, the bit 2.0. And the reason we would want to do that is because um, the lines are getting a bit blurry. They're all called Ozocodes, but some of them can be interpreted by the Ozobot, and I believe some of them may only be able to be interpreted by the um, Evo. So we're going to kind of step by step through each one of these and then see what we get. Um, and then we'll do it again with the Evo. We'll also demonstrate a few of these um, templates that we, uh, game templates that we got from the website. Okay, so um, here we go. We're going to work from these instruction sets. I'm going to make a little table as I go and then I'm going to make it available on my website. Uh, so the first one that we want to demonstrate is um, uh, just the basic behavior, how to make it go forward. So how do we? Okay. The the first thing you have to do, um, or to know how to do, is to calibrate your Ozobot. And um, here you can go to Ozobot.com support calibration. Okay, uh, there's the paper calibration if you're using markers and the pre-designed um, pages. And then there is digital calibration, and they're very different. So to calibrate it all, you need to hold down the power button for two seconds, and then the Ozobot will flash a white light. Um, you place the Ozobot in the calibration dot, and if it's paper, you, your calibration dot will be black. And then if it is digital, your calibration spot will be white. Um, uh, there's an additional step when you're doing a digital calibration to set your screen brightness to 100%. And a uh, green blinky light means that your Ozobot is successfully calibrated, and red means not. There is um, a tip, paper and digital calibrations are independent procedures and cannot be used interchangeably. Always calibrate for the surface type you're using. Then there is another step. You can also watch the how-to videos for calibrating Ozobot on paper, digital, and when using the Ozoblockly editor. Um, 
and also additional tune-up features. And I think this is an important step that most people might not do. And uh, so this is to download the Ozobot app and then you will have the opportunity to test, to reset your Ozobot to its factory settings, tune up the motors on large iPads only, and then reset the default speed and access other customization features. I believe that when you do um, that this may give you access to uh, a firmware updates for the Ozobot as they discover problems. And I think there was one particular one that I talked to someone about and it's been fixed, but I'm not really sure if it was with the Evo or with the bit, um, but uh, just note, um, if you want to do your tune-up, you can, and this is valid for the bit. Um, okay, so now I'll show you the basic behavior of the Ozobot. Um, first engagement is to um, get a marker and draw a line. Now here we've got a couple of lines and they're different thicknesses. So basically we're using the bit so we will turn on the bit. We haven't calibrated yet so you can calibrate on one of the pre-dotted um, pre, pre uh, papers or you could just make a dot yourself. So we have a pre-dotted paper and see, this is about the size of this. So we're going to turn this on. It's going to go white. Oh. And then we put it on. It's calibrating. And it turns green. There. Successful calibration. Great. Now, once it's calibrated, then you can draw a line. And we've drawn these lines. And you can set the Ozobot to work. So here, um, there's a thin line and a thicker line. Now with this line was the first line we did and what we discovered is that some lines are better than others. And so so this line is not the most ideal. This line is a little bit better, right? You notice it got to the end here and it didn't know what to do. Here it got a little stuck because the line got a little thinner. So there is definitely a need for consistency in the line width and having a wide enough line. So I guess one of the challenges we could create for ourselves is to say, how can we get the Ozobot to consistently navigate through the entire line with my name on it, okay? So that's showing you what issues the Ozobot can come up with initially. Can you pass me a couple of markers?